Hello there, YouTube. In today's episode, we will be going into this 1977 K10 Chevrolet, looking at the air conditioning system and swapping out the compressor, discharge hoses, orifice, accumulator, and some other things uh, to get this thing up and running on our 134A and keeping me cool because I'm in Arizona and it is hot. So in this video, I have purchased a new compressor. These lines, because I don't know what that thing is and I don't know if it's important. So I bought new lines um, for that. A new accumulator. Then I had to buy a little tube to hook up to the new accumulator. I got a new orifice and I think that's it. So, uh, so stay tuned, follow along. We're gonna be uh, swapping out this air conditioning system. So here's the new parts. Um, I got that line kit that bolts uh, to the compressor. Bought a new accumulator and it seems that they don't make the accumulator with this tube permanently attached. So you buy this tube, um, I don't know, the accumulator is like 30 bucks. This tube is less than 10 bucks. Got a new pressure, uh, low pressure, high pressure cutoff switch. Uh, then a compressor and then Pag oil. And looking up the reviews of this compressor, it's an AC Delco. Um, people are complaining. They're saying that, oh, it didn't last long. Well, guess what? It doesn't come with oil. So uh, make sure you buy your Pag oil for 134. And then uh, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna drain out if there is any oil in it. Because the this system takes, uh, I wanna say 10 ounces of oil. And I'm hoping this is 10 ounces. That's eight, ah, there you go. Uh, this system takes eight ounces of oil, so I'll be using that uh, to fill up full of oil. So here we go. Before we jump in, I uh, hooked my gauges up to see what the situation was, and there is zero pressure inside this system. Uh, that concerns me. I put uh, about 100 pounds worth of Freon. Well, I put Freon in there last week and um, to get it up to 100 pounds with some leak detection dye and now it's empty and i've run my uv light over the system i don't see that die anywhere so i've got a leak somewhere and yeah i wish i had nitrogen um or something to because freon's expensive and it's bad for the environment so we'll see what happens but we're starting off with no pressure and a leak somewhere in the system so i will be conscious of that and maybe i don't know come up with a game plan on what to do as I swap all this out. All right, they are good and tight. Now we'll uh, get it back in the car. So reading this tag, I don't know if you can read it, uh, but it says that this compressor is pre-charged with three ounces of oil, which works great. Cause I said, this thing takes 10 ounces. This is eight ounces. So I'll measure this out and just put seven ounces of uh, PAG oil in there. And uh, this system should be perfect. 
All right, here's the uh, oil fill for this compressor. I went ahead and already removed the screw there. So I'm gonna figure out how to get seven ounces of this oil in there um, without making a mess. So uh, stand by, may have to go in the kitchen and steal a funnel from the kitchen. All right, I don't have a funnel small enough to get in there, but we'll see if this works. Um, just be careful, I guess. I swear to God. Just can't pour out, can you? Just can't, just pour out, make this easy. I didn't want to go too fast because I knew that would happen. So there's the extra ounce all over my floor. So now I gotta, I gotta figure this out. I think I'm gonna wrap some tape around there, make that nozzle a little longer. All right, here we're back. So I just wrapped some tape around the nozzle to kind of create a spout, and I hope this works. Oh, it works beautifully. So we'll just slowly use patience, take our time, pour that seven ounces in there. Because again, I, I, I was on some user groups. I didn't see it from Chevrolet, but on some groups, people said it needed 10 ounces. So it's getting 10 ounces, whether it wants it or not. Now, some people say you should dump some in the pump, some near the accumulator, some near the condenser. Um, I've installed a couple of the uh, vintage air systems in my other cars, and all the oil was in the pump when I bought it. Oh, shit. So, uh, I don't think it's necessary to do all that. No systems are running this way. That's it, oil's added, done. That's it. The uh, compressor is is replaced. How about that? Now, still got two bolts for where. Well, now I tighten the bottom ones, but for the adjustment here, the adjustment here, there's two bolts that go in there. But for the most part, the compressor is installed. I'm going to use the new tube. Get that installed. I probably won't film it, um, but unless I come across something interesting. But it's just a matter of disconnecting the tube on this side, disconnecting the tube on that side, and hook up the new one. All right, I've got all the lines disconnected from this unit. I can't remember what it's called. It's not the condenser. Um, but it's the, uh, it's the refrigerant side that cools the cap. So I'm using uh, just compressed air. I'm going to blow it through and then shoot out whatever oil, junk, whatever is in there. To get it all out. Um, the, the 134 system, the 134 system uses uh, some kind of oil, and then, or I'm sorry, R22 uses some type of oil which is in there. 134 uses the PAG oil. I think one of them uses mineral oil. One uses the other. So I'm going to get it all out. There was a service bulletin from Chevrolet it says it. It's not extremely important that you get it completely out. They'll work together, but they recommend you get out as much as you can. So that's what I am doing. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? I think I see the orifice. I was wondering where that thing was at. So there's the uh, orifice. So I grab that out and yeah, it doesn't look, there's a lot of metal in it, which I imagine came out of the pump, but uh, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Oh, there we go. Now she's squirting. So I'm just gonna keep doing that off camera. Um, I'm gonna eventually use some acetone to go through there and clean out as much as I can and then move on. Let me catch up with where we're at. I had it disconnected here and blew just carburetor cleaner into there, um, compressed oil or compressed air um, out of there and it made a mess. Uh, you know, I'd show me but I'm not showing me covered um, with air conditioner oil head to toe. So I'm, trust me, I'm covered, I'm a mess. I got a little emergency going on at work, trying to deal with that. Um, but anyways, I uh, used PAG oil, I lubricated the green O-ring that came with the accumulator here. Um, the tube came with one here. Again, lubricated it with the PAG oil to get it on there. Um, screwed it in, it's pretty tight. Um, everything's still kind of loose. I'm gonna wait till the final to get it fully tightened. Um, I bought a new orifice tube uh, right here. Jammed it uh, in there appropriately. Um, this one sticks out a little bit. The last one didn't stick out, so I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so now I'm going to go to the condenser in front of the radiator and uh, clean that out. I'm not gonna show it just because it makes a mess and I just don't want my camera phone near it. So um, trust me, I'm blowing it out and I don't think you need to see it. It's a uh, squirt, squirt, carburetor cleaner, blow, blow, <laughs> compressed air, big giant mess. So, um, so that's happening. Like the other thing I noticed is that this has two service ports on it. My last one had one. So I don't know, I don't know. Are they both uh, low? I don't know. We'll see, uh, we'll figure it out later, uh, but whoa. Uh, but moving on uh, to the front condenser, we'll blow that out and then get everything hooked up and start drawing a vacuum on it. Here is where we're at. It is now holding a vacuum. Thank baby Jesus. So we, I've replaced the pump. And that just really entailed changing the front bracket, um, this rear bracket, and then the connection on the back, which is just one bolt, put some oil in it. Um, and like, the weird thing is I can't spin this by hand, but if I work at it, I can. I put two nuts on there, I got it to spin, and the instruction manual says that expect it not to be able to spin freely right off the bat because of some kind of protective coatings they put on the inside when they assemble it. Uh, and they asked to not send it back for that reason. So I hooked it up and said, okay, fired the engine up and it spins. So but I can't do it by hand, uh, maybe later, but right now it is not spinning. I'm a pretty tough guy. I'm pretty sure I could spin it. I, I replaced the accumulator, replaced, I installed this tube um, the orifice, uh, brand new orifice is in here. Uh, everything's got new O-rings and so far it's all working fine. Again, I got my Harbor Freight uh, gauges set here and it's been holding a vacuum on both the high side, low side, just fine. It did not, uh, after I did everything inside the engine compartment, it was not holding a vacuum. Uh, I went so then I went down to the front. Here's the last two places that had O-rings and I took this one off, it looked good. The very last O-ring to look at was this one. When I pulled it apart, the O-ring was blown out. So I'm pretty sure that was um, part of the reason this air conditioner didn't work was that O-ring not being in place. Um, but it could have been 
that the pressure relief uh, switch wasn't working. I put a new one in. The system overpressurized and blew that O-ring out. I don't know. But right now it's holding the vacuum, which I like. And if I'm going to let it set for a couple hours, if the vacuum gate needles do not move and it still holds the vacuum, I'm going to pressurize it. Oh, actually, I'll run this vacuum pump on the whole system probably for an hour. And then, uh, and then I'm going to put free on in it. And then we will be done. Well, bad news. It's, uh, it's not holding a vacuum. I uh, ditched my Harbor Freight gauges thinking maybe that was a problem. Went to these uh, Richie uh, yellow jacket gauges, uh, put it on, removed a lot of the stuff, and it's just not holding a vacuum. So thought about it. Uh, I'm not sure what to do next. So I think I'm going to put one can of Freon in it tomorrow and then uh, spray some bubbly stuff, uh, water on all the joints. See if I can find a leak. So, um, yeah, disappointing. So hoping this was gonna be a one day project, done one and done, but it's gonna move on to day two. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Well, it's not the next morning. I uh, went in the house, started thinking about it. There's no way I'm gonna be able to sleep, wondering what the hell's going on with this truck. So thought about it and I'm gonna put a half a can of R134A in it. Uh, right now you see it's zero. And I'm going to use the old Windex. So I'll pressurize the system a little bit. And then I'm going to spray Windex on all the joints. And hopefully I see where it's leaking. Um, so I'm not going to film this part because uh, it's, it's hard to hold the camera and do everything. So uh, if I see a leak, I'll bring the camera back out. Here we are the next day. I couldn't find any leaks with the Windex. So this morning I pressure washed it, cleaned it up. Um, got all that old oil mess um, UV dye that was in there and uh, everything's clean again I couldn't find any leaks so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this red hose I'm gonna fill it up with the UV dye and, and then I'm gonna charge it with a couple more cans free on and then uh, we'll see what happens all right I've got 30 ounces of refrigerant in there um, Seems to be holding. I don't see any leaks. I don't see any dye coming out. So uh, the book or the internet experts say it should have 3.2 pounds, which is 50 ounces. So uh, I'm going to keep it at 30 ounces for the, the time being. And if it does not leak out, then I'm going to go add the extra 20 ounces. Um, right now, with the 30 ounces, it's blowing about 59 degrees out of the vent. So. Um, better than nothing especially seeing as it's uh, about 99 degrees right now so it's pretty hot uh, pretty happy with that so we'll uh, we'll see so thanks for watching and uh, hit that like subscribe and notification bell see you next time